Hi, Jody here from Healing Journey. Um, so before we dive into today's conversation about leaky gut, I just wanted to remind everybody that we are launching the awesome 14 day clean eating challenge beginning next Monday. That's September 17th. Um, so make sure that you click on the link in this live to get to that awesome challenge so that you can join us. It comes with, uh, 14 days of, uh, meal plans. Uh, including breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, so three snacks a day, um, as well as a shopping guide, nutritional information, and a mo motivational Facebook group. So this is great if you are having trouble getting back on track after or the summer holidays. If you're not sure what to eat, if it's hard for you to stay on a special diet, um, or if you're just looking to do some clean eating in September and get things on the right track with your gut. Um, so in line with that, I wanted to talk about leaky gut. I know I've talked about this a little bit before, but today I wanted to try something a little bit different, which is to um, go over exactly what leaky gut is and why eating healthy can be so instrumental in healing your gut and why leaky gut is often at the root of a lot of our our health issues. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. Um, so this is an image that I developed to um, explain leaky gut to my clients um, because this is a really big component of what goes on with healing. So when we look at the image, um, what we see is this is the lining of our gut wall. So it's only one cell deep, which if we think about it, isn't very um, thick at all. So basically one cell lines between what you're ingesting in your mouth and what's absorbed in your stomach. So that saying you are what you eat is really quite literal um, because it doesn't take much for things to get into your bloodstream. And so that's what the enterocyte is here. Um, and then these little purple lines are what we call tight junctions. And so essentially what those are is those are the fingers that hold the um, cell lining together. Um, and that prevents these molecules up here from getting through. Um, so the molecules up here, we have um, the little green spider looking things um, represent pathogens. Um, this is undigested food. The little triangles are nutrients and the X's are toxins. So these are all things that go through our um, gut on a daily basis. Um, hopefully there's not a lot of undigested food, but if you are having digestive issues, um, it's quite likely that that would exist in your stomach. Um, and so in a healthy gut, we can see that these tight junctions are really quite nice and they're working well. And so we're not going to see anything getting through into the bloodstream here. So this red line is representative of blood vessels. So we see the only things making it through are the nutrients. Um, and they make it through because they're absorbed through the cell. Um, and they're also absorbed through microvilli here. So microvilli are the finger-like um, things on the ends of our enterocytes and they're responsible for a couple of things. So they're responsible for producing um, enzymes to help break things down. Um, like for example, to break down lactose. Um, and they also are responsible um, for absorbing nutrients. So on this side we see a very healthy gut. And on this side, this is a representation of an unhealthy gut. So let's look at what's going on in the unhealthy gut. So we see compromised tight junctions. So the little finger-like structures that are holding the cells together are not holding the cells together anymore. So how does this happen? A lot of different reasons. So if we're exposed to toxins, if we're exposed to pathogens, um, those can also all impact um, the tight junctions. The other thing um, that's key to know here is gluten will impact tight junctions. So um, gluten has been shown by Dr. Fasciano. So this was huge in the functional medicine world. Um, this research to actually um, cause a whole bunch of events, a cascade of events that basically leads to the opening of the gut lining in 
both healthy and unhealthy people. Um, so that's really, really important for everyone to know. So although not everyone reacts on an immune level to gluten, whether you're healthy or not, gluten is still going to cause um, the lining of your gut wall, even if it's just temporarily to open up and allow everything to enter in. Um, so we can see here that all of these things that aren't supposed to be getting into the bloodstream actually do get into the bloodstream because these tight junctions are not um, working properly and therefore they're not protecting the body from what should be not in the body. So what happens when these pathogens, when toxins, when undigested food gets into the bloodstream? Well, you can imagine that that's not really how our body was designed. And so it's going to create an immune response or some sort of inflammatory response. And this shows up in different people very differently. So autoimmunity is a big, massive indicator of leaky gut. Um, and the reason why that happens is basically we're seeing these things get into the bloodstream and lots of different things happen with autoimmunity, but essentially um, molecular mimicry happens. So that's where, let's pretend this food molecule here looks like a part of your cell. And so the body gets confused, the immune system's on hyperdrive because all of this stuff is getting into your bloodstream and it starts attacking cells that look like this undigested food particle. So that's where you get one of the reasons you can have autoimmunity. It's also going to create lots of issues for the immune system as well. Um, and actually, another thing that we see is mental health issues. Um, so there's something with depression called the cytokine model of depression. And so that basically is saying um, that because of inflammation, um, we, uh, our body's natural mechanism is to become depressed. So we slow down and our body's forcing us to kind of look at what's going on here. And so this inflammation in the gut is actually causing inflammation in the brain. Um, and so this is huge for the mental health world, which, um, I mean, there definitely can be lots of other reasons for depression, but one of them most definitely can be because things are entering into the bloodstream and causing that inflammation there. The other thing we're starting to see, or we can see if we move along to the next cell here, is atrophied microvilli. So if we remember before the finger-like structures are responsible for properly absorbing nutrients, so we want to see nutrients go through the cells. So here, they're not going to be absorbed properly, so they're not going through the cells. They may go in between the cells, but that's not what we want to see. They're not going to be used properly if they go that way. And then over here we see a poor cell. So this poor cell is just completely holy and it's absorbing everything um, that it possibly can through it. So you can start to see why the gut is really central, particularly in my focus, but also with functional medicine when we look at healing. So when we look at healing, when we look at a variety of different symptoms, I always draw people back to the gut. Let's look at what's going on with the gut. So no matter what symptom we see, um, whether it's psoriasis, um, whether it's infertility, um, whether it's actual GI symptoms, whether it's mental health issues, I always want to look at a what are you putting into your body and b is your body actually able to use what you're putting into it so there's lots of different causes of leaky gut um, stress can be a cause of leaky gut so if you get super stressed you're not going to produce hydrochloric acid which means you're not going to break down your food properly which means you're going to get these lovely undigested food particles Toxins are another major cause of leaky gut. Um, there's lots more information coming out about gly glyphosate. And actually, there, scientists are starting to wonder if part of the reason we're seeing such a crazy amount of gluten intolerance and gluten reactivity in people is because of glyphosate. Because essentially, glyphosate is sprayed on gluten at the end of um, the harvesting cycle to harvest the grains a little bit faster. So that's just one example of one toxin. There's tons of toxins. I could do a whole Facebook Live on that. The next and most obvious for me is pathogens. So lots of people have pathogens in their gut. 
Um, and they may not necessarily have symptoms for this. Um, I had a client who came to me with skin issues, no GI issues whatsoever, and she had worms and bacterial infections and amoebas. So she had a whole host of things going on. Um, obviously her gut was adapting as much as it could, but her body showed the weakness in her gut issues in a different way. Um, so I always like to do testing for pathogens. I don't treat without testing because I think it's really important to know what we're dealing with and to use herbs that are specifically targeted and known to address those issues. Um, and then obviously diet. So if we're eating foods or if you're eating foods that are, you know, you've, you've gone, th that have gotten through, um, and are causing an immune response in your body, then what we're going to see is lots of inflammation in your body because of that. Um, so we want to eliminate the foods that are causing that immune response, usually for about 30 to 90 days. Um, so when I work with people, I like to put them on an anti-inflammatory diet. Um, so that is just because we want to calm their immune system down as much as possible. We want to stop aggravating this area. We want to give the microvilli a chance to regrow. And so that's when we get into the healing phase. So what sometimes happens is people come to me and they're like, you know, I've, I'm on aloe vera, um, I'm on slippery elm, um, I'm on these supplements that are, you know, supposed to heal my gut, which is great. But if you have all of these things going on, then it's an uphill battle for your gut to heal. And sometimes your body needs some help to get rid of these things, whether it's you changing your lifestyle or the addition of supplementation. And once that's cleared, what you've done is you've cleared the pathway for the gut to start to heal itself. So that, in a very quick nutshell, is what leaky gut is, and this is why I'm constantly focusing on the gut. This is also why I am really pushing the 14-day clean eating challenge because although technically and typically you need a little bit longer than 14 days to really heal what's going on here, the eating challenge is going to really help soothe the gut lining and introduce healthier foods that is going to pave the way for your body to heal. So I hope you enjoyed that um, little overview of leaky gut. If you have any questions, please feel free to write it in the post below. Thank you and have a lovely evening.